there's not enough time. Have you ever heard yourself saying this? I'm sure you have because we all struggle with time management sometimes, whether it's managing yourself or managing your client projects. But in this video, I'm going to give you my top tips for managing your time as a motion designer. Hey, it's Hayley from Motion Hatch here. Make sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe so that you can get more lessons on how to grow your motion design career and build a successful freelance business. As a motion designer, time management is extremely important. Whether you're working on your client's projects or you're working full time and trying to build up personal projects on the side, it's really important to manage your time so that you can have a successful career and so that you're not burning yourself out. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I manage my week, how you can manage your emotion design projects and how to delegate and automate so you can work on more of the things that you love. Make sure you do stick around all the way to the end because I'm going to show you how you can stick to your deadlines, make your clients happy and ultimately make more money. If you'd like to get your next client in just five days, do check out our free course. I'll link it below this video in the description and let me know below in the comments what was your favorite time management tip from today? So I want to show you how I manage my week in this Notion board. So basically, if you want to learn more about Notion, then you should check out Mary Poulin. She has a great channel on YouTube. She actually made this template. I've tweaked it a little bit for how I want to use it, but not that much because I've just started using this. But some of the ideas in this Notion board I was doing previously, I just wasn't doing them in Notion. So it's really nice that now I can do it all in Notion and I feel like this is the best way so far that I've managed to figure out to visualize my whole week. So let's start going through this. So I think this section is really good entering the weekly milestones. So for this, you might think about what are the top things that you really need to get done. And then I always enter them in here. And when you're working through the Notion weekly templates, I always make a template and then I duplicate it for each week in the month. And I will add important tasks here. So if I'm thinking about next week, I need to do something, I'll add them up here. And then on a Friday or a Sunday, I'll go in and add them into the days of the week. I really like doing it this way as opposed to what I was doing before in Asana, where I was having my days, but I couldn't see them all in one board. So I've changed this. I know that she had um, most important tasks, but I've put top three here. This is really important for me because what I figured out was, I think I must have heard this from someone probably on a podcast or something like that, that you can only really get three things done or three big things done a day. So to make my life a bit easier and to also, you know, feel like I've accomplished something by the end of the day, I always put my top three in for each day. And then I have my to do's underneath. So it's not a massive, huge list where I'm not sure what the priorities are. I just try and really stick this to top three priorities, but sometimes they get a little bit longer and stuff like that. I'm definitely not perfect and I'm still working through this. And like I said, I've only really just started using this template, but the idea of having top three tasks for the day, I think really helps because as many of you know, our to-do list is infinite, you know, it never ends. So I feel like it's great to put your kind of stretch goals here, but then have your top three things that you definitely want to get done in the top because then you can feel like you've accomplished something. Another thing that's in this template that I was doing already as well is blocking out different, doing different types of things on each day of the week. So yours will probably look a little bit different to this, but for example, you could have admin on a Monday. Obviously I do a lot of recording of podcasts and videos. So Tuesday, I mainly reserve for recording content. And then Wednesday, I try and put my meetings in all together in one day. It usually doesn't work and it usually ends up with two days in a week that are either really heavy with interviews or meetings. So I do have these little meetings tags at the top here as well. So I tend to put in my meetings for the day. So I'll go in at the beginning of the week and I'll be like, okay, on Monday, I've got a meeting at 3 p.m. And then on maybe on Wednesday, I've got a meeting at 12 p.m. 
with my accountant and then I've got a meeting at 3 p.m. for a podcast interview. So something like this. So I'll go in and I'll add in all the meetings and I like that they're all at the top of each day so you can see. And then I add in my top three and then I'll add in any extra to-dos I want to do. So these to-dos end up getting pushed along the week quite a lot sometimes. But as long as I feel like I've done my top three each day, then I feel like I've accomplished what I wanted to do. And I always go back to this milestone section and think, am I doing the things that are working towards you know, the big milestones. So if you want as well, you can read a book called The One Thing by Gary Keller, which I really recommend. And that book talks about what's the one thing I can do today in such by doing it, everything else seems easier or unnecessary. And I think that's a really, really great thing to think about when you're thinking about your milestones, because it's like, what can you do today that will really help to push your business forward or your career forward so that you can get things done, but you're not just doing things for the sake of it. So I definitely recommend checking out that book as well. So like I said, blocking out time for each day works really well. And then on a Friday, I always try to keep that as a bit of a buffer day. And I know Marie does that in her template as well, which I think is really good because inevitably you end up moving things along and they end up going on Friday, but then you're not pushing things into the weekend and things like that. So the weekly review is down here where you write the outstanding tasks that didn't get done. So it's quite easy. So you can just drag them over. So say if a task was to, you know, email a client or something like that, then if I didn't manage to get that done, then I could just drag it down into here and then I know that the next week I need to push that into my tasks for the next week. Obviously on here as well, we've got stuff like publish blog, news that are social. So you could change these to be, um, you know, publishing a behind the scenes of my animation, publishing on LinkedIn on one day or something like that. So it can work very well because you've got not just a huge to do list, you kind of have everything separated out into different things. And in notes, I'm usually putting personal things in here, like, I don't know, I need to take the cat to the vets or something like that. <laughs> and then on Saturday and Sunday, obviously you've got more personal errands and things like that. I really also love this bit about the template. You've got a little habit tracker because I always found it difficult to track my habits when I'm using my phone or something like that. And I really like this template because I like to see everything at once. And then when I'm looking at my daily tasks, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I went for a run on Thursday. I did some meditation on Thursday and Friday. And you can just track your progress and see how many things you're doing. And it just really helps as well to remind you to take care of yourself too and um, not just be focused on the work and getting the tasks done. So the bottom of this I think is amazing and I really appreciate because I think that it really helps you to focus at the end of the week on what went well and what didn't go well and what you're looking forward to at the weekend and things like that. So I think it's really great to write down what fun things you're looking forward to this weekend, describe the week in three words, this week's highs, lows, good, happy, proud moments, and then this week's lows, frustrations, challenges. And I think what I would also add in here is add something about what can you learn from those challenges you know what I learned this week you could put it in that section but when you're thinking about a challenge or a struggle I really encourage you to think about okay well from this challenge or struggle is there anything that I can learn so that next week or the next time I work with a client or something like that I can learn from that and implement it so I don't make maybe the same mistake again and I really like who and um, what am I grateful for? And then what would I like to improve? What do I hope for? So I think this is a really, really fantastic template. And I recommend that you go and grab it. I'll put a link in the description as well. I also work in a way where I do quarterly goals and monthly goals. So I will take my quarterly and monthly goals and then I will add the quarterly goals into the monthly goals section and then add the monthly goals into here each week. 
at the top here so that I know what I'm working on each week. So if you want me to go into more detail about how I'm managing my time and notion and things like that, just pop a comment below this video and I'd be happy to make more videos like this one. Another question that I get all the time is how to manage your freelance projects whilst you're working full time without getting burnt out. So I'm going to give you some of the tips in this next section. And this is even going to be useful if you aren't working full time and you are a freelancer because you should be doing a lot of these anyway. So I want to show you how you can better manage your motion design projects. If you want to learn more about managing your projects, do make sure you check out this video above. If you're feeling like you've got too much work coming in and you're feeling overwhelmed and a little burnt out, then it's definitely time to be a bit picky about the types of projects you take on. Because sometimes out of fear of there not being any more client projects in the pipeline, we take on too many projects and then we get burnt out. Another great thing that you can do is you can recommend other people. If you recommend other motion designers for projects, then they're likely to recommend you in the future. So this is a great thing to do. And I know a lot of people do this in the community and have found that they've managed to get a lot of referrals back from other motion designers. And also you're keeping your clients happy as well. The last tip that I want to give you for managing your motion design projects today is to be extremely organized. I do recommend recommend using something like Notion like I was showing you earlier or Asana or maybe ClickUp as well. These are all project management systems that our students have used at Motion Hatch, and it really helps you to take control of your projects and make sure that you're hitting those client deadlines and keeping you on time so that you can make more money. So make sure you check out those apps and make sure you don't get overwhelmed. Sometimes we can go down a bit of a rabbit hole when we're trying out a new app, but just find something that works for you and then just stick with it. That's what I found works the best for me because sometimes I know that you can get overwhelmed by all the different apps in the space and trying all the different things. But I think just pick one that works for you, stick with it. If you need to share your timelines and stuff with your client, then do that because it can help sometimes to let them know how long they have for revisions and things like that as well. Just one final tip for you if you are full time and you're looking for freelance clients on the side, if it's an issue that you aren't available during work hours, I have known some freelancers to give a slight discount to their clients because they aren't available for meetings and things like that. But do make sure if you do this, that you do put it in your invoice as well, that you are giving them a discount because you're not yet freelance full time. But when you are, you list the original price in there as well. So now I want to tell you how to delegate and automate more so you can make more time for yourself and also make more time for doing the projects that you love. So the first thing that you should do if you want to delegate or automate is you should write down the things that you do so you can figure out what to delegate or automate. So how can we do this? Well, I learned this tip from entrepreneur Chris Ducker. So Chris Ducker has these lists called the three lists to freedom. So what are the three lists to freedom? Well, list one is writing down the things that you don't like doing. List two is writing down the things that you can't do. And list three is writing down the things that you shouldn't do. So let's go through each of them and explain a little bit more. So list number one is write down the things that you don't like doing. So this is a pretty obvious one. You should write down all the things that you really don't like doing in your day to day running of your business or your career and write down the things that you procrastinate on as well. Are there any tasks that you like never get it done? It always is at the bottom of the list constantly. It's just keeps going down to the bottom of the list. So these are obviously things that you don't like to do. So I would definitely put them at the top of this list number one. So list number two is things that you can't do. So these are more things like that you kind of can't do because you don't have the skills, you're not really doing them fast enough. Things like building your own website or creating your own logo. As motion designers, I mean, you probably can create your own logo, but the question is, is it going to be any good? 
So that's some of the things that I would write down on my things you can't do list. It's not necessarily that you can't do them. It's that they're the things that you could possibly delegate to other people and save yourself a bit of time and money because you could be working on some motion design projects while they create your website or create your logo for you, for example. So the last list in the three lists of freedom are things that you shouldn't be doing. So these are usually things like you know, admin and doing your own taxes and things like that. And sometimes most people aren't hiring out their admin to begin with, but some people do do that. And you can use a virtual assistant, which they will do things like managing your calendar. Maybe they're replying to some of your emails, doing some of your social media, and it might not be right for you right now, but it definitely could be something to think about in the future. Also, another thing that you shouldn't be doing is probably doing your own taxes and accounting and bookkeeping. So these kind of things are usually things that most motion designers do delegate to accountants and CPAs and things like that. So that's definitely one to recommend for this list, but I would write down everything you could think of, the things you feel like you probably shouldn't be doing, but you do anyway, and maybe that somebody else could help you do in the future, even if it's not right now. So after you've wrote down all of these three lists of freedom, I recommend that you go through and you highlight the different tasks that you think that you could potentially delegate or automate. You can color code these, so maybe you could put yellow for things that you think you can automate, you could put red for things that potentially you could outsource to a VA or an assistant in the future, and maybe things in blue that you could outsource to another designer. And then you can go back through and you could see potentially where you can save yourself some time and it can help you to figure out what might be the next step to delegating and automating and helping you to work on more of the things that you actually like doing in your business. Just a quick note on delegating. Once you're ready to delegate some things to other people, I really highly recommend that you create some systems and procedures in your business so that you can tell the person exactly what they need to do and it's a repeatable task. Or if it's another designer, for example, or another motion designer, have a really clear brief because you can spend a lot of time managing other people. So if you don't have systems and processes or briefs in place to help them to understand what you want them to do and how you want them to do it, you can spend a lot of time managing them and it can kind of feel like you shouldn't have hired them in the first place and you could probably do it easier yourself. So this is why creating systems are really important. I recommend checking out a book called Work the System. We'll put a link in the description below this video as well. And um, that will give you a little head start on how important systems are and how they can help you to free up your time and create a really good business for yourself that can help you make more money and also help you to have more time as well. If you want me to talk more about systems, let me know below this video in the comments. I'd be happy to make that video for you. So my final time management tip for you today is how to make sure that your projects aren't gonna go over the deadline. So the biggest thing you can do to make sure you hit the deadline and don't go over it is to put some buffer in place into your schedule or into your project fee. So what do I mean by this? I mean that you can add two to three days extra than you think it's gonna take into the timeline or the schedule before you give it to your clients. So therefore you're giving yourself a little bit of extra wiggle room if you are going close to the deadline. I would also recommend if you think that something the client wants to do is gonna make you go over the deadline, that you let them know as soon as possible so that they can change their decision or they can help you to reduce the scope so you can hit the deadline. This is really, really important and something that I learned when I was working full time. If you let the producers know, the project managers or the clients that you are gonna go over the deadline as soon as you can, they can usually help you to reduce the scope of the work or they can help you figure out a solution so that you don't go over the deadline and then all of those issues are avoided. 
Even better if you can go to the client and suggest to them how you can keep their project on track and in scope, then this will make the client very happy and you will also be paid for all of your time. So this is really, really important lessons to learn when you're managing your time as a motion designer. So I hope you enjoyed this video today. Do let me know in the comments below this video, which was your favorite tip. And if you have any other time management tips for motion designers, I would love to hear them. Please do check out our how to manage your projects as a motion designer video, and I'll see you next time. Oh,